So you saw here several different concepts. The big idea is that we're in the command prompt. Maybe we're looking at the virtual devices. Maybe we're running a, maybe we're doing a build and all of that. There's a lot of different concepts here. It'll start to come together the more we do it. But just to kind of see it again because of how important it is, let's do this. I've got an emulator running. Close it completely. You might have to hit it a couple of times. But close the emulator. You may also have still the, the node command prompt open. Just close that one completely also. So we're shutting everything down just back to basics like that. Um, I'm going to leave the web browser open. I'll, we'll look at the documentation as time goes on. But I've closed the emulator. I closed the virtual device. Same thing. I closed the SDK if you might have that still open. I closed the prompt. I closed it all down just in case, you know, when you go home, where do I start? He makes it look so easy in class, but how do I start at home? So what we would do at this point is kind of reiterating our steps. The very first step is we need to get to the command prompt to start with Cordova. So on the Mac, you go to your terminal, or in Windows, we go to the Start menu, and let's start node command prompt again. Node.js command prompt. This time, I was working on the desktop or somewhere. I want to work now on my flash drive. I want to switch to my flash drive, so hopefully you've got a flash drive plugged in. If not, just uh, we'll do this on your computer. But if you've got a flash drive, I need to switch. Right now I'm on the C drive. I need to switch to the F drive. Here I do need to know what drive I'm, I've plugged into, and the easiest way is to just do a plain old open computer and see that in my case, my flash drive is on F. Whereas maybe F, G, K, I, I don't know. The fastest way to find that out, just open your command prompt, or open your computer, and I see F. So now that I know that, the way that I can switch to my F drive in the command prompt, I simply type the name of the drive, F, colon, enter took me to my F drive. Then I can confirm that by typing DIR. There's all the stuff that's on my flash drive. Notice it's not CDF. In Windows, technically, we're not switching to a directory. We're going to the F drive. On the Mac, it's different. I don't remember how to do it, but it's the path is different on the Mac. But here, I was on the C drive. I type the name of the drive, colon, enter. I'm on the F drive. So writing these notes, which again I'll give us at the end of the day, in command prompt to switch to your, to your F drive, USB, simply type I'm going to type the dollar here, F drive. The dollar is just the standard way to say the command prompt, because the command prompt here, in my case, is C, user's instructor, and now here it's F. So in the command prompt, well, if you want to make that note or not, F colon enter, that takes you to the, my F drive to make a folder type mkdir space whatever. Whatever the name of your folder is. Make directory mkdir. I want to make a folder in my flash drive for my projects. Let's do that right now. Let's make directory apps. If you don't have a flash drive, you can still do this on your computer right now. If you're in the if you're in your in your project folder on your lab folder, you could do CD desktop and do what we're about to do. But we're going to do it on the F drive, on the root level of my F drive. And I know most of us organize ourselves pretty well. A folder for this class with a folder of this month and all of that. Forget all of that because it's going to be more cumbersome to type the names of all of your folders. 
here. We're, we're used to making a folder here, right click on Windows, new folder, calling it My Amazing Project 2017 dash version 1. And whenever I need to open it in Windows, I just double click. We're not going to be able to double click in the command prompt anymore. And there are shortcuts. So I would recommend, though, just keep your file name short so that you can type them when you need to. On the root level of the F drive, I have a folder in my F drive called Mobile Apps 2. It's got spaces and capital letters and all of that. I'm going to make a simple folder to have my apps. MKDIR, make directory, space apps. When I DIR again on my flash drive, I have a new folder called apps. I want to get into the apps folder. How do I do that? CD space apps. Enter. My command prompt says I'm on the F drive, apps folder, apps directory. All right, create. I'm sorry, Cordova first. Create. Uh, we'll call this template, space. This is where now it's going to get a little bit more unique. This would work up to this point, and it would create a file, a folder called template, and an app called Hello Cordova. We want to create a template folder project and a template app. So Cordova create template space com dot your last name dot the name of this project, template. This can be edited in the config XML file that we saw last time, or we can type it right the first time and it's done. This is a unique identifier that differentiates your app from someone else's app. I can create, I can do Cordova create calculator. And there's already a thousand calculators in the app store. Well, what differentiates my calculator from the competition is that mine is com.campus.calculator. There's no other app in the App Store with that ID, that package ID name. There's com.smith.calculator, which is different than com.campus.calculator. That's the package ID. We saw that previously. Space in quotes. We're going to then type the name of this project. Open quote, end quote. In our current version of Windows 7, I can't click, I cannot click at that point to get between the curly braces. How am I ever going to move back to between the curly braces? Arrow keys on the keyboard. So whatever you type here, if you want to navigate through it, arrow keys. Right. You can't click anymore if you want to... Oops, I mistyped template. You can't click template. You have to use your arrow keys on your keyboard to fix what you typed. You don't have to go back to the end of the line to press enter. In the middle here, I could press enter. <coughs> In quotes, my template. The quotes are there so that if my app name has a space, because normally spaces denote further parts of a command, don't they? So you might think, you're trying to run the Cordova create command to create a project called my, and then you're trying to run a command called template. No, I'm trying to run Cordova create to create a project called my template. So it's in quotes. If you wanted it super simple without quotes, less to remember, you could call it my template. What's the difference? Camel case, no spaces. That, that would not require the quotes, but if you're going to call your app, you know, VR Scape app, if you're making a virtual reality app or whatever, the name of the official name of my app is VR Scape app. I need quotes. My 
templates. So here, uh, Cordova create template package ID name of the app. Again, wherever your cursor is at, press enter. This is creating a template file on your flash drive. Any subsequent work in Cordova needs to be in the folder of the project. What's next? CD my template. The name of the folder of the project, my template. The folder is template. Now, as I'm starting to type template, I'm already tired of typing it. So, cd te tab, then it types the rest. By pressing tab on a valid folder or file, as you start to type its name, it will type the rest. So I'm starting to type template, and I press tab, it types the rest of template. It types the rest of the name of that folder. That's how I can go into this folder that I called mobile apps development one html As I start to type that huge name and mistype it, Instead, I could start typing CD, actually I call it CD 2017-02 mobile. I can start typing the name of the huge folder, press tab and it'll type the rest. CD template, enter. I'm in the folder template. I'm showing you how to get into a folder very easily. CD the name of the folder. Sometimes we need to go back outside of a folder. I want to go back to the app's parent folder. I'm in a child folder. I'm in template. I want to get out of template back to apps. CD space dot dot. That always takes you back one level from your current folder. Once you enter that, I'm back at apps. So to enter a folder, cd name of folder. Start typing a folder name, then press tab on the keyboard for autocomplete. To go up one folder level, cd space dot dot. So I'm outside of the apps folder. I did cc, uh, cd dot dot. I do want to be inside of the the template folder again, so we'll do cd template. Try to use that. Try to get used to using that tab. The more you type, the more you could mistype. So shortcuts like that autocomplete with tab are very helpful. need um, Cordova platform, add Android, space browser, and according to the, doc the documentation it's much more correct to also at the very end add dash dash save. It's relatively new. I, I need to get used to that too. I, like I said, I've been doing this, making apps this way for, for a few years now, and teaching this. But this is relatively new that I saw in the most recent documentation. I guess it's a good idea to do it if the documentation tells you. So we need to add the save attributes or the save option. Whatever we're doing here, save it into the config XML file just in case, just to make sure. Enter. Mm -hmm. 
it should be faster this time uh, compared to the beginning of the day. But because it's on a flash drive, that might also take a moment. If you have a USB 3 flash drive, that's better. I think I think these computers have USB 3 plugs. Do you do you guys have a little blue USB plug port? If your, if your towers don't have the, the the blue USB, I guess you don't have USB 3. I think other rooms might have it. What's the what? The dash dash save. Uh, that is a um, a more recent Cordova option to save what we're doing inside of the config XML file. So it's just more configuration content that is saved in the file. The short answer is we, we just do it. What it actually does is it saves internal internally it saves see how it says here saved plugin info in the config XML file. So it's just saving behind the scenes things in the config XML file. So the function how it runs is self and then the admin in that is auto self. Is that how it works? At some point, uh, following the output here, it seems that it first, you know, set up the Android target and then saved it to the config XML file. That seems to be the process here. And then here at the end, saving, etc., into config XML. So it does it at some step. And lastly, what we did again to fully prepare it, what was the very last thing that we did to prepare at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day? We, we just did that one. Cordova build. build. Let's do build. We're doing this to our template file because what, what we're setting up here actually is a template. I don't want to do this over and over. I don't want to do Cordova create, Cordova add Android, Cordova build. I don't want to do that over and over. It's not that much, but I don't want to do it over and over because the big secret to all of this is that this whole project is, is self-contained in the folder. Once we do Cordova create, it's in that folder and everything we've done to it is saved. So I'll explain that as soon as this is done. It's portable. It's then easy to copy and start over quickly. This template folder is a complete project up to this point. It has the Android operating system and the browser operating system. So on my flash drive, just to show you this, you don't have to do this, but on my flash drive, I've got a brand new folder called Apps. That was MKDIR. And then I've got a folder called Template. That was Cordova Create Template. And inside of there, it has the platforms of browser and Android. So this template, if I do copy and paste, and I get template copy or template two, that's a complete new project. That's a ready-to-go Android project that has been set up as a template. So that's why we might create a template file first, like we just did here, because this template project has the ability for us to, to work with. Let's do one more thing to make it a, our, our starting template. Let's add the camera. That's always a fun plug-in. Cordova. Plug-in. Add. Camera. Dash plug-in. Dash camera. Enter. That will connect to the site. Download the appropriate software and then 
and then uh, give us the features to be able to use a camera. Uh, did I mistype something? Part uh, of a plugin, add camera. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm, why is it camera plugin camera? No, it's Cordova plugin camera. So I'm going to press up to bring back my last command, and I mistyped arrow keys. It's Cordova plugin camera. So don't type it again. Press up to bring back your last command, or down, up and down on the keyboard, take you back and forth between your commands. So bring back the misspelled command, and then arrow keys to the left, and that should be Cordova. And this is the syntax. We'll look up the other ones, but they're all like this. Cordova plugin, add Cordova plugin, camera, um, dialog box, vibration, GPS, whatever, they're all in that kind of format. Uh, I don't have to go all the way to the end. I can press enter right here. We're adding the camera plugin to the Android specific project and to the browser specific project. After that, we'll do a build one more time. We'll do just simply Cordova build. See, this is getting faster. It took 12 seconds. It took like 11 minutes the first time. Cordova build. Once we get the basics of these commands, getting comfortable with the command prompt, that's going to be the easiest thing of this whole month. The, the, the work is still going to be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. <coughs> but just setting all of this up, take some time, take some thought, take some effort. When that's all set up, it's just back to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yes? Um, not quite. We could add seven plugins at once and then do a build. We, we're only going to add one for the moment, and then we'll build it. But we can add as many as we want, and then we build it so that the app is ready to be used. So we can write on our notes. Um, to add a plugin, Cordova plugin add the name of the plugin. Usually, basically, they are Cordova dash plugin dash something to prep project for deployment Cordova build. Processing my flash drives blinking, it's still thinking. While that's doing, I'll also make a note to get help or tips. Simply type Cordova. So, all of these commands, they're obviously coming from the Cordova website. And using them enough times, I, I can I, I memorize them. But in the beginning, I don't have them memorized. If you just type in the command prompt Cordova, it will then show you the list of possible commands and some tips. So here it took two minutes instead of eleven. And again, if I simply type Cordova, so backing up a little bit, scrolling up a little, I typed uh, Cordova. It says here synopsis Cordova command, options, global commands, Cordova create, create a project, help, etc. 
when you're in a project and you type Cordova info, it generates project information. When you're inside of a project, you type Cordova requirements, check and print out the requirements for the platforms. I think I want to run the Android project, but do I have the requirements? This will check. Do you have Java installed? Do you have the Android SDK? Let's say I'm trying to do this on iOS, so I type that, Cordova requirements, and it'll tell you, iOS, you're missing Xcode. You're missing this, you're missing that. Cordova platform add. Cordova plugin add, prepare, compile, clean run, etc. Cordova build is the same as Cordova prepare and then Cordova compile. Cordova emulate is the same as Cordova run emulator. Check your version and here's examples. So we did all of these. We created our project, created the camera, we need to save. I guess that's okay. We added the platform of Android and saved it. You can check your requirements. You can build it with verbose and it'll show you even more feedback. Run the project. And eventually we'll do this. Cordova build for release. Ready to publish on the real app stores. Our version right now is a debug version. The app stores will not accept it. When our project is done, we need to build it in release mode where we sign it as a developer. Where we use our developer's key, our developer's credentials, to sign it so we can upload it to the real app stores and make money off of it. That'll be much later. If I want to see this in the web browser, we haven't done that today, really, but how do we do that? How do you see your project in the web browser? Cordova run browser. Try that. Type Cordova run browser. No, make directory is a plain old Windows command prompt command. When we do Cordova create, it creates a folder, but for the purpose of having a Cordova project. When we the purpose of the make directory is simply to make a directory. It has nothing special about it. But Cordova create directory makes a directory, makes a folder for a Cordova project. So let's see here, Cordova run browser. And then I'll say here to, to stop the browser. Control C two times. So control C on the keyboard because the terminal here, the command prompt, is it's it's showing the web project. It's running a mini server and it's showing the project in a special way. Uh, uh, anything I type here is going to be ignored, so control C twice to bring back the terminal. Yeah, this. Oh, I can see it right there. 
I saw errors, but I, I see it there. Cordova run list, available Android devices, available Android virtual devices, AVD for 3.2. That's the one we made together a little while ago. And then the Nexus 5. Let's see, unexpected error has occurred while running list devices with code 1, error, command failed, label browser virtual device. Uh, this is an error for something else. This is label browser devices. So it's, it's giving us a list of, you see here, real devices, nothing, virtual devices, those two, and then label browser devices, and that's an error. And then another label device, la label browser virtual device, and that's an error. So we don't have those installed. Cordova emulate Android. I'm not going to follow through, but remember, Cordova emulate Android will run it in a virtual device. To run in. A virtual device, Cordova Emulate Android. You can pick which virtual device, because we've got two to choose from. The one called the one called AVD underscore four three two etc., or the one called Nexus Five. So right now, if I try to run it and I didn't specify, it will semi-randomly choose one of those two. No emulator specified defaulting to AVD 3.2. That's fine. I'm going to cancel that because I know that works. And cancel that too. To list devices, Cordova run dash dash list. To clean the command prompt. We're, we're typing a lot of commands and we're getting a lot of results uh, and that screen might be getting kind of cluttered. I like to clean up the command prompt once in a while. You know, clean command prompt, clean mind. So CLS, clear screen that clears your command prompt. Uh, don't do it or else you'll lose all your commands that you were looking at, but sometimes I do it. Meaning all this output that is here, if I CLS, it clears it out and I can't scroll back up anymore. It's gone. But I can still press the up arrows to bring back my last commands. You mean the remaining copies of more apps? Mm -hmm. Remaining copies that would have the same direction structure of the parent call template. Well, what we would do, which we will do, is we will make a copy of the folder completely. That's what we want to do. And yes, it will inherit the name template, which we will then change in the config file. And then it's a completely separate app, which we will do. So what we've done is, um, oh, we'll do one more thing. Uh, we're setting up a template. We, we, we added the Android operating system in the browser. We added a camera plugin. We, we have it built so that it's faster for the next times. This template file is coming along pretty well. This is going to be a foundation for future apps. One thing that is a lot easier to do then next is define some of the basic internal aspects of the project. So in this case, I will minimize 
these things. I didn't close it. I minimized it. And I want to go in in the Windows Explorer. I want to open the template file on my F drive. In the in the template folder, I want to open the config XML file in Notepad. I think we have a really basic editor in command prompt, but it's not as good as something like VI or Emacs, if you like. But here, uh, we'll just do it in, in Notepad. Find your config XML file in the template and then edit in Notepad. We see that this is where it says that ID that we typed in the command prompt. version 1 of our project. These are arbitrary numbers, but we can change these if we want. We're working on version 1 right now. Maybe we, we want to you know, be cool and we're saying we're working on version 1.299. Whatever version number we want to write here, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, these version numbers, you can make them up. The rest of that line we'll leave alone. Here's the name that appears below the icon when it's installed. That's what we typed as the last item of the command prompt in quotes. If we want to rename our app, my template 2, we change it there. Description. Let's put here our basic Cordova template with camera plugin. That's not quite ready to be released for the public. Of course, it's our template. But that's a note for ourselves there as we work on the project. Line 7 and 8, pretty self-explanatory. Line 8 first. Who's the, who's the name? What's the name of the development team? This again is completely up to you. Uh, I'm gonna make this up as Campos Apps LLC, and so it is. I'm an app developer. You don't have to go to any special governing body to become an app developer. You can become an app developer right there. And then later on, when we actually want to publish to a real app store, we create an app certificate. That's a little more official, and we'll do that later. But here, I'm an app developer. Why? Because look, I'm an, I'm an app developer. And that's, that's valid. You can change this at any point. Make it up however you want. And then email. You can put your email. I'm making mine up. href to the home page of your app development studio. Uh, yeah, it's right over here. This, at the moment, it's all fake. Uh, we will put something real later when your app needs to be published for real. Because again, I'm going to give copies of my work as we proceed so you have a starting baseline. But eventually you're going to need to diverge and have your version of the project. Because when you try to upload your project, it'll say, wait a minute, there's already a com.campos.calculator. Well, you need to change it to your own ID eventually. And you need to change your author information eventually. We'll do it later. Save that config file and close it. And close Notepad also for a moment. I'm going to go outside up to the root folder, apps. This is a, this is a pretty good template file as our starting point. Uh, we, we want to perhaps set up a um, just to play with this camera. I want to see what that's about. 
I want to make a copy of this template just to test the camera. So in Windows, what we can do here, if you don't know this trick, if you right-click and hold and drag, usually you just do a right-click. But if you right-click and hold and drag, and then let it go, it pops up to say copy. That's going to be much faster than right-click, copy, right-click, paste. In one action, you can right-click and hold and drag to the empty spot and let it go and just do copy. It's 24 and a half megs or so, so it might take a little moment. But this is based on your template. Uh, how we've set it up at, up to this point, this is going to be a brand new app. I'm going to, in a moment, rename the folder just to call it camera app or something. Then I also want to change the config XML file because the ID still says com.campus.template. I want to change that to com.campus.camera app, camera test. Changing the folder name and changing that ID in the config file makes a new app. That's it. So instead of doing again, Cordova create camera app, Cordova platform add, Cordova build, all of that, you just copy this folder which has all of that set up. It's self-contained completely in that folder. No need for advanced things like refactoring and such that we might need to do in Eclipse if we're on that route. It's all self-contained in the folder. because it has a couple of operating systems. It takes a moment to copy. There's a lot of files in this project. We never really have to deal with anything. We just deal with like 1% of the files in this. Behind the scenes, Cordova is doing all the magic. We just need to deal with the config file and the stuff in the WW folder, and everything else just works. Visual Studio takes a while also because, first of all, the software itself takes up a lot of RAM and hard drive space just to start up. And then you've got to download the latest versions of the code, and you've got to have the overhead of Visual Studio working for it to even do this. So it's always kind of slow, no matter how you do it, but this is often one of the most direct ways. Hopefully, eventually, you get your copy. This is a new app, so I'm going to rename my folder Camera Test. I'm keeping it simple. No spaces, no capital letters, no dashes, no dates. Simple. Inside of the folder, we'll edit the config file. Of course, make sure you're editing the config file of your new camera app, not your template. Edit that. This is no longer com.yourlastname.template. It's the name of this project folder, camera test. This could be anything. It can be kitty cat. And it's a new app. That com, that ID is what is the big important thing that differentiates it from any other app. Might as well name it as the name of the project folder. The icon that appears below the uh, the text that appears below the icon, camera test, app, whatever, kitty cat, whatever, any name here, but the ID is the one you definitely change. Description you can change that if you want. Author you probably don't need to. You're still the author. Whatever you want to do for description, camera testing app. Save the config file. Save the config file and close it. Now we'll go to the website and see how does the camera work. I have it all set up to work, but now I need to know what do I need to type to be able to take photos. Go back to cordova.apache.org if you left it. Go back to the documentation and on the left 
uh, table of contents, scroll down to find the plugins for camera. We'll actually see how the code looks like, we'll actually do it, we'll, we'll make a project that will take a photo. This will work best if you've got one of these tablets that you might have borrowed. Uh, so we'll actually be able to see it on a device. Uh, I have already a, a different device that I've already set up, and again, uh, we're going to wait for that for just a moment because there's a couple of little steps we need to do on your device to prepare it. We're going to read the documentation here for a moment. Okay, installation, check, we did that. Cordova plugin camera, we added that. Going on, going on, quirks, reference, camera. So basically, using the camera, get picture. So let's look at the example. The example here, we need to type navigator.camera. Uh, let's clean up, up here. Uh, Navigator.camera.getPicture, camera success, camera error, camera options. Let's see. So the way that this uh,